Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal. Today is August 5th. I've already covered today's anniversary, which is a, a young mother who died after an abortion at a Planned Parenthood. So, because I've already covered this, I'm going to link to it below. And we're going to go back to listening to the Life Dynamics podcast with Troy Newman of Operation Rescue. And, and this is where the government comes in and is really quashing the outcry. You know, doctors are licensed by the state, and they can have their license taken at any moment for any precarious or capricious reason. Remember back when doctors were prescribing, God forbid, ivermectin yes. uh, to help or have any sort of protocol for COVID. Right. Uh, as soon as they speak out and they say, hey, I've experienced X number of abortion complications at in my emergency room position, they'll be thrown out of that emergency room, they'll lose their license, or their license will be in jeopardy. Okay, this is uh, new to me. I'd never heard of this being an issue. The government then comes in, hides the details on these autopsy results where the woman may have died. I remember uh, Kristen Gilbert died from heart failure, yeah. and she was a late-term abortion here in Wichita, Kansas. It took us eight months to get the autopsy results. It was the longest autopsy in the history of the state of Kansas. Okay, and I'll provide the link to Kristen Gilbert below. Right in front of a poor kid that died on a football field from cardiac arrest. Just took him forever to figure out what caused his death, but we knew what caused Kristen Gilbert's death. It was an abortion. Right. And in the autopsy result, it was so it was so whitewashed. It yeah. didn't say abortion clinic, didn't say where, and said she died from a heart failure. <laughs> well, yeah, when you die, your heart stops. Yeah. Okay? But when you read the whole thing, you know, they fancy it up with a lot of uh, clinical language. She hemorrhaged. She hemorrhaged to death because her uterus was perforated by George Tiller and Leroy Carhart, both of them now deceased. And she bled out because they punctured her uterine artery and she bled to death. Mm -hmm. Well, I would think so, that yeah. any legitimate medical person who was looking at that autopsy would ask the question... And also as an example of whitewashing an autopsy, I'll link to Creer when Shepard's uh, an, an analysis of her autopsy below. Okay, what does a seemingly young and healthy person suddenly go into cardiac arrest, right? They exactly. ask these questions. And that's what well, the, these, these you, autopsies are supposed to tell you. I have made it kind of my, uh, my job, if you will, to be a quasi-autopsy expert because I wanted to see, let's, let's compare some other autopsy. So I've actually read Whitney Houston's autopsy. I read that kid that was shot in Florida's autopsy. I read Michael Jackson's autopsy. These become very public. And believe it or not, you actually have no right to privacy under HIPAA once you're dead. Yeah. Um, actually, that's not true. It depends on some states are open record states where anybody can request the autopsy. Some states are closed record states where you have to be... Um, in certain categories of people to be able to get uh, get hold of the autopsy. And also it sometimes depends on where the autopsy was performed and the length of time between the death and the autopsy. Uh, we were able to get Sherry Graham's autopsy report because um, the autopsy was done more than 24 hours after she died, so she was no longer considered a patient at the hospital. And I'll link, link to Sherry Graham's death below too. But we, they're doing an autopsy. Your full autopsy is out there. And it's interesting when you read these, they'll say, hey, the decedent was found lying on her bed, face down. She's got a tattoo on her ankle of this. Uh, she had this, this, and this in her system. Mm -hmm. There's, I mean, some details you probably don't want ever, ever made public because they're very private. They're analyzing your dead body and everything that has gone on, your medical history, all of the toxins that are in your body, all of your scars, mm -hmm. uh, and everything else, and it's all there. And if you have a tattoo, the exact wording of your tattoo is written on the autopsy. <laughs> now, yeah. you, it is, it is. Mm -hmm. I've read them, and I didn't realize that Whitney Houston had tattoos, but okay. she did. And so now you go over, and, and I start looking at the same autopsy of a different person, but this person died from an abortion. And highly redacted, highly politicized, the word abortion never used. Sanitized. No Very, that's better. But interestingly enough, um, in the case of Becky Bell, who miscarried, they used the word abortion, which is the technical term for a miscarriage. And abortion is when the pregnancy ends with a dead baby prior to viability. Um, there they used the word abortion. 
so that they can claim that instead of miscarrying while she was dying from aspiration pneumonia, they blame the pneumonia on supposedly a criminal abortion. And um, they dragged that girl's parents all over the country trying to, um, to thwart parental involvement laws on the grounds that supposedly this law had resulted in Becky's death. When, when Becky died, she had information about um, a maternity home that she was thinking of going to. She could have traveled across state lines for a legal abortion. Uh, instead, she went partying, probably trying to get her mind off what was going on. And she threw up and she aspirated and she got pneumonia. And while she was dying of that pneumonia, um, she passed the, the dead baby and hence the word abortion and the abortion lobby ran with it. So if it is politically advantageous to the pro-abortion movement, you can bet that word abortion is going to be on that autopsy report, even if the death had nothing to do with an induced abortion. Sanitized. Sanitized. Sanitized, yeah. And that's how it is with like long-term abortion complications as well. Even if the woman doesn't die, but has complications later on in life because of her having an abortion, they don't mm -hmm. say, you know, she's having these complications because mm -hmm. of an abortion. It's for some other reason that they try to come up with. Mm -hmm. And the thing that bothers me the most when the pro-choicers talk about how abortion is so safe is that, I mean, you look around for reporting on everything. The CDC watches stuff. You talk about, like, deaths from smoking cigarettes. But the moment it comes to abortion, it's, oh, all these injuries and deaths are voluntary. Some states don't even take it. Some states collect the most basic of information. There's no right. standard, and there's no actual watching to see how safe it is because they know it's not. We can, and I'm going to kind of tie up this video, this video here. We can look at the study that supposedly proved that you could do um, outpatient abortion on demand at a freestanding clinic without any state oversight, GYPSA, a Joint Program in the Study of Abortion. And that was just getting records from abortion clinics, their own reporting of their complications. So first of all, it's not going to include women who just went to their primary care physician or to their obstetrician, their gynecologist, to the emergency room. It's only going to include women who had a complication that the clinic documented. And second of all, the biggest data set in the original GYPSA was from the Center for Reproductive and Sexual Health, AKA CRASH, and they got chart, uh, caught charting a dead patient, as I think the exact wording was, pink responsive alert. And we're supposed to believe that that was an accurate accounting of abortion complications when they're charting dead patients as pink and alert. So I'm going to end this particular video here. Keep chugging along with me.